Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat, I'm an editor based in Hertfordshire and this is my little part of the internet that I have documented my knitting adventure from my first project through to now where I have knitted I think well over 300 items which is kind of nuts and I've nearly been knitting, in fact I probably have been knitting for four years now which isn't in the grand scheme of things that long but yeah it's kind of cool. Uh, I should really see what my, when my last, my first podcast was, sorry, and see, you know, because it might have been four years on YouTube, which is also equally wild. Um, but if you are new, welcome. This is a fiber, fiber space, I guess, um, but anyone is welcome. Um, if you've been here for a while, it's really nice to see you again. I, I don't know. I was really quite excited last week to share and I'm really grateful that I did. Thank you so much for the kindness and the pats on the head. <laughs> I know I requested them, but yeah, it feels really lovely to kind of be heard and know that as much as you're there for me, I feel like some of the kind words implied that I was very much there for you too in your times of need. So thank you very much. Um, yeah. It's a, uh, it's been a week. How? Uh, I'm recording on a Tuesday. Yesterday was bank holiday, but we ended up doing quite a bit of work for our little Roots and Stitches project, which has now been sort of announced and shared a little bit, um, which is very exciting. It's something that like you'll see a video hopefully very soon, maybe next week. Uh, you know, we've been working on it for the better part of a year and to finally have it taking little steps out the door into the wild is kind of nerve-wracking and exciting all at the same time. Um, I'll put the link to the Instagram somewhere along here if in case you're interested in seeing a little bit about that project and kind of watching it grow and maybe being a part of it if you are interested. Um, yeah, I've got myself a cup of tea. It is, like I said, Tuesday, it's first thing. I've had half a cup of tea already and then I kind of sprung into action and decided it was time to just chat. I I have every intention of recording a summer video of just all the summer knits that I've got in my wardrobe and things that are kind of useful for the summer months, even if that's the evenings. And uh, But I just fancied doing a a normal sit down and chat really today um, so that's what we're doing <laughs> I hope that's good <laughs> uh, I do have my cup of tea I'm gonna put that down while it cools because that this cup is a pint um, and I've spoken about this cup before but this basically is uh, I don't know why it's not the nicest most beautiful handmade cup it's a Kath Kidston mug I've had these cups in my cupboard since I was 18 I started using these cups which sounds wild but it really is um, I got one when I first went to university and then I ended up get getting ones for gifts uh, over the years and they actually stopped making these mugs so Alex bought that one for me uh, a few Christmases ago and actually every other one of them has broken apart from this one so I'm like fingers crossed that this doesn't break because I do use it almost every morning anyway uh, I am wearing wool it's a bit chillier today my, I've actually got cold feet but I'm not gonna put slippers on or socks on because it's probably balancing out my temperature really nicely to be able to snuggle down in some fibre um, I am wearing my Stand up a little bit. Dee dee. So this is the Brackenside Pines. It's a jumper that Alex and I kind of designed together. Um, it was a team effort. He, I don't remember. We found this fuzzy orange yarn in a kind of 
it's not a thrift or a charity shop particularly it's like a recycling shop in Perth um, it was really affordable I will go back into my old videos and double check what the fibre is if I can um, and I, it was about a pound for a jumper's quantity and so we just bought it and when I came home I realised I had this amazing sweet paprika um, I think it it's um, it is superwash merino fade set so I was like oh that would be cool and it doesn't quite highlight how much of a fade these yarns are you can sort of see it here um, but I just knew I had to put them into a project and it had to be something really autumn-y because of the colour and then Alex went and picked me up a contrast colour in Loop in London um, he actually gets to go there more than me I don't really travel into London very often um, if I can help it uh, but he he went in he found this gorgeous yarn I think it's from Life in the Long Grass again I'll try and put the the fiber on on screen for you um, and then I designed this color work um, I love trees if, if you've been here for a while you know I very much love to be outdoors nature's my happy place um, and yeah so we just got going and it has since been released and it's wild that it's been released but it is a pattern that is available and I just wanted to wear it today so I'm wearing it um, sometimes I get funny I'm I actually spoke about this with Mary yesterday um, the another another co-founder in Roots and Stitches I really am not very good about talking about things that I've done and it's really helpful that Roots and Stitches is a project that is about highlighting other people um, so I feel quite comfortable compared to how I might normally feel like this I kind of just want to say this is this is what it is and then throw it away and not tell anyone else because it makes me I don't know why because if it was someone else I'd, like if you design something and you were wearing it I would absolutely want you to be like look what I did I did a thing and I need to keep working on that I think <laughs> anyway I have some knitting more than I thought but I did I, like you, you might have seen if you were here last week I wasn't very well I was quite under the weather um, to say the least and I managed to do a quite a bit of knitting and not much of other things that are quite important that needed doing so hopefully this week is going to be a lot better I am feeling not 100% but nearly at my normal baseline um, which is still very slowly creeping up towards its true neck baseline which is really cool but I haven't I haven't moved my body properly I went for a nice walk on Saturday I really wanted to and I went on Sunday yeah I went for two walks on, on the weekend because um, Alex was away and then just didn't do anything yesterday we aside from a bit of work um, we kind of just relaxed we watched a film and just knitted so I've got a fair bit of knitting all things considered and I should just show you right um don't know which of the finished ones to share let's do this one this one I think last episode I was like yeah I would really like to get this done by October but I finished it and I'm very very happy I'm in fact I might swap I might swap outfits I might do that um but I finished my Arachne, which <laughs> this is a pattern by Andy Sutherland. Sutherland, that's I think more accurate. And it has brought me absolutely nothing but joy. I would love to knit it again. I think I might have a couple of friends who would really be into this. So there's part of me like. I might approach them and ask rather than just knitting it because it's a lot of work for something that someone might not be that interested in but I've got a couple of friends that probably are and it is a top-down yoked jumper so you're starting at the neck and then increasing until you divide for the sleeves so 
you just keep knitting in the round you'll put these stitches on to hold finish knitting the body um, it has a bit of ribbing at the bottom and then you'll come back up to the sleeves and continue knitting them out in the round i have made some modifications some intentional some absolutely not intentional um first of all in regards to the charts i did two of the charts instead of four of the charts so it might look different to some of the other <laughs> ones out there i also continued for my size i continued the full length of the chart instead of stopping a bit earlier and knitting extra rounds just in plain stockinette without any color work um i also did I talk about this a lot ladder back jacquard it's a really simple technique to use i will put a link again into the video that i find found the most useful but all you're doing is picking up one stitch below where you're working and doing a purl stitch and then you've got that extra stitch on your needle and then any time you get to that stitch you're purling it and you will end up creating a piece of fabric that sits at the back so you can have nice and long floats without any any puckering and I'm really impressed actually with how it did come out um, it's come out very beautifully and I don't think there's any puckering for such a fine colour work like you know it's one row of quite long stitches and then rows with quite long gaps I think it's come out absolutely beautifully um, I don't think I could be any happier in that regard I omitted any waist or sleeve shaping so the pattern it's really it is beautiful and the way it fits looks lovely um, but it's designed to be a fairly short sleeved with quite fitted sleeved sleeves <laughs> jumper and then it's got lots of waist shaping to to really bring it in but I wasn't about that this I just I do really like a certain fit I've got a variety of different fits in my wardrobe and this is the one that I don't know I'm drawn to the most so I did it um, and then because I didn't do any shaping and I know that I wanted to have slightly longer sleeves than I have been doing I do from time to time like to bring my sleeves over my hands and most of them in all fairness can do that but I don't want to I don't always want that to do, like, damage the integrity almost so this was is clearly stretching out the fabric um, whereas if I pulled this one over my sleeves at my fingers it would probably not stretch too much um, so I just do a few well a single round of quick decreasing just to decrease the width the circumference so actually what I do is I check double check my gauge just I don't know it's instinctual even though I've got it from the rest. I, I've double checked my gauge when I get closer to the end of where I am with the sleeve. I will double check how many stitches I've got on. You, know, you never know if you've lost some. Check how what the circumference is now. Then I will decide how I want the circumference to be when I am finished. Um, remembering that ribbing and going down a needle size, if you do that for ribbing, will look play in. And just decide how to de decrease accordingly. So I think this one was just knit two together all the way around. Um, I don't know, I think it was like 17 inch, 17 inches or something, 16 inches. I can't remember, but it basically halved it. Um, and then yeah, it was as simple as that. I'll put it on. I'll put it on. Um, I do need to, I have blocked it. I do need to go in with a lint roller to get rid of the excess mohair and my own hair that's in this but oh, I love it I do think now I didn't do any adjustments for anything but I must say I think this is the best fitting yoke I've ever knitted um, I really do I think it fits absolutely beautifully it doesn't the it lifts a little bit but actually it fits so much better than many of the previous yoke jumpers I've knitted. Um, I love the length, the sleeves, like they do, 
balloon a little bit. The sleeves balloon a little bit. I love that personally. I wanted a little bit of drama. I could have done an increase round, like maybe three inches, four inches before I wanted the sleeve to really give it dramatic effect, but that was a bit more than I wanted in the end. Oh, I've just mohaired all in my tea. Uh, um, which I do think would be a very cool option if this is a pattern that you're interested in knitting and perhaps if I talk to my friends and show them how it fits me and if the adjustments that I can do because it's a very, you know, with the exception of the yoke which I wouldn't want to do anything other than <laughs> maybe the accidental adjustments I did uh, it's a really customizable jumper, you could easily do a folded collar which would be beautiful. I actually prefer less um, fabric against my neck when it comes to that. I find that the folded necklines just add a little bit of bulk that I don't really like. Um, so I often do a tubular bind off for this sort of thing but actually I didn't on this. Like I said last week I I was watching Spider-Man when I bound off the body and proceeded to just bind off in a normal manner as I normally would. So, but I love the finish. I think it looks great. It might be, might be one of my favorite. Yeah, it already is. It's one of my favorite jumpers. So the fiber I used was this evergreen. Which is a yarn, oh. Which is a yarn by Hobby. Um, a brand that I hadn't really previously used before until they very kindly approached me to review some yarn, um, which is wild in itself. Uh, but so far, this blocked beautifully. It's softened up even more, I would say. Um, I think it's going to last. It's quite lightweight, yet I was able to knit this at a 3.7mm needle and it's come out gorgeously. I think it's a little bit loose without being, like there's, you can't see through it at all and it's not, there's no, you know, the air's gonna get through but it's not gonna be, it's just come out really nice, it's a really nice thing, yarn to work at different gauges, I think you could knit this at um, a mitten gauge, so maybe using say 2.25 through to 3mm needles and it would knit up equally beautifully, it'd be a bit warmer, it wouldn't show off the loftiness so much, because this really is, I don't know, it's got everything for, it's not, a, it's not a cheap yarn I wouldn't say, it's I think, I think it's about eight pound a ball or six pound a ball, which is very reasonable actually for the yardage, I think you get over 200 meters, 230 meters for 50 grams, which makes it kind of a four ply but I managed to knit it at something at the same needle size I would use for a DK or a sport weight yarn and there you go like yeah um so really singing its praises it's an organic yarn 100% wool and it is very soft um again I have a very high threshold for sensitivity to wool I wear Icelandic yarn next to skin. I don't often get the the like the itches from yarn. It's you know when I'm flushed and running around like a headless chicken. I don't really like that phrase. But anyway, yeah, when I'm doing that, then occasionally I'll you know be a bit like, oh wow, I need to take some knitted layers off. Um, but I think it's beautiful. I think a lot of people would like this next to skin. 
and I'm very happy with the results so far. And I will check in into how this wall stands up because part of me thinks that because it is so lofty and it doesn't feel like it's the tightest spun, it might pill quite a bit or felt. Felting wouldn't be an issue to me. That would be quite good because it would just become stronger. But if it pills too much, then it would be a bit sad. And then the fluffy yarn is from Yo Yelman Yarns. I <laughs> know oh, I struggle with that. It was a cone that I got as part of a mystery box set to get me kicked off on my knitting machine. And the other yarn that I held with it is a beautiful natural sock from Woolly Mammoth Fibres Company. And I yes, so this overall is one of my favourite things I've ever knitted and I think I'm going to leave it on. Sorry autumn, I was embracing you and instead now I am fully embracing spooky season. Yes, so I would also just like to say thank you again to the Skipper Knits who I will just call by that name. Uh, just in case you don't want to be called out personally. Um, but very kindly sent me this pattern and I really tried to hold off casting it on and I just couldn't. And the amount of hours of joy this pattern has brought me is unfathomable um, and it came at just the right time to feel like I was getting a hug and you know sitting knitting with someone else um, even though no one else was here so thank you again now I'm hugging myself now <laughs> I'm also hugging you through this this little process so yeah I'm really happy with this I can't believe I've already been speaking for 20 minutes I'm gonna hit pause I'm sure at this point you know what I'm doing when I'm stood up to press the button, but I don't know. Maybe I really am turning into some sort of weird indie comedy series character. I sing to myself all the time what I'm doing. I talk what talk through what I'm doing out loud all the time. Maybe it's just because of the, you know, the limited company in my days, but... Yeesh. Mm. Oh, yeah, I've just seen, and it is definitely too warm to be wearing it, but knitted beret and knitted spooky jumper. This is just a vibe. Uh, it is definitely too warm for this, but Maria of Woolen Forest, I'm sorry, I'm just... This is a vibe. I think you kind of di did this to me as well. This is definitely my autumn vibe this year. Anyway, right, other projects though actually my hair is feeling so much better than I thought it would considering it's taken a bit of a abuse this year. Um, I am so thrilled with this. Um, in fact I was so thrilled that you'll see not just one version but two. And not just me, but Alex too. If you're new here, uh, Alex is Mr. Hops, is my husband, he's an amazing, amazing little soul. I want to give him a big old hug. And I finished this project Wednesday or Thursday last week, so not long after recording. And he tried it on, and it was too warm to be wearing it, but both of us was like, this is cool. Uh, and was immediately like, I think it's a hood year for me this year. I was like, okay, so I will need to knit another one and I really will most likely knit myself a black one. I'm actually almost out of black yarn. Wild. Um, but I think I will knit myself a, a black version because it's going to get worn a lot. So <laughs> let's share what it is. So this is the Storm Hood by Albiona McLaughlin. I had been looking at this pattern when Albiona released it and I was like that is beautiful and I, I just don't know if it's something that I would wear. I don't know. It, uh, it's beanie season. I, I took quite a lot to not put just put a beanie on today. I'm trying to be quite good with not putting my woolly hat straight onto my hair. 
I washed it two days ago. I have quite long gaps between hair washes. Not massively, but like, you know, a week or so. And I feel like it's, for me, it's nice to not straight away tie my hair up and put a hat on on day two of washing my hair. Anyway, not information you really care about, but so I don't. Um, but then I thought about it and I was like, actually a hood makes sense. A lot of my coats don't have hoods. It would be nice to be able to actually wear a beanie under a hood and be super snuggly. Um, we do quite a lot of walking and I feel like this, this the pattern was part cow, part hood. Okay. And then I was doing a little bit of just wall pantry and gazing as you do. I was like, oh, and I found the gorgeous, uh, this is, yeah, painted spring farm alpaca. Um, it's really beautiful. It's, So it is a stunning worsted weight, 80% alpaca, 20% Donegal tweed yarn. Um, very kind, Joyce sent me some yarn last year from Rhinebeck. I don't, I can't comprehend that still. Um, I'm very grateful that, you know, there's this interaction and swapping and passing forward. It's just awesome. Um, I found this yarn again, I say found, it was just there, but I picked it up and I was like, okay, you need to be knitted, it's the time, and I referred back to the hood and I was like, I think this is perfect, it, the pattern requires up to two skeins of worsted weight yarn, it was going to be a quite a, I knew knitting at a larger gauge, it would just be a fairly relaxing, fairly speedy project, didn't expect it to be as quick as it was or as moorish as it was. So I, I caked this up pretty much straight away. The pattern itself gives you multiple options, like an amazing amount of options actually, really, like if you think about it. There's an option for a flared and a straight fitted sort of cow area. There's an option for a braided and an invisible grafted seam at the top. And then also um, how to add the hood onto another garment, so knitting it onto a jumper you're knitting. Which I think is quite amazing and then the sizing goes down to I think a toddler size up to one size larger than what I've knitted. Um, so I think it's a really good scope, it's a really a really good value for money pattern. I think Albiona's more than fair with, with it, um, she could easily charge more than what she is. But, um, so. Sorry, definitely enjoying tea today. <laughs> Very much so. Wowza. I had a really bad cup of coffee yesterday morning. Like, really bad. I had to purchase some decaf from the supermarket. I couldn't... It's not budget-friendly month and all that. And it's actually pretty much undrinkable. Uh, so... Yeah, I might pre-grind it and then put it away for people that don't care about coffee. <laughs> um, which is very sad to me actually that the most easily accessible coffee is actually the one that's roasted the most, which takes more energy to hide bad flavours rather than roasting it well. Anyway, this I knitted with the flared option. I did end up not... 
how do I explain this without be giving away the pattern too much or get being confusing? So I didn't change to a smaller needle kind of as soon as I was meant to. So this actually has a slightly wider neck than it should, but it's still beautiful and fits lovely. And I did the third size. I felt like knitting a larger hood made more sense. And I think it was the right choice in the end. And it's actually what I did for my second version. So it clearly was what I felt comfortable with. Um, oh, I put it on. I might get too warm. I might get too warm. Um, so. <laughs> so it can be worn in multiple ways. As a hood, I feel like a ranger when I put this on. Like I feel like I should absolutely have a, a bow and arrow and be in the woodland. Um, can obviously wear it further back. I will probably wear it a little bit further back and tucked, this tucked. I can't imagine it getting so cold needing to be sort of, but you can be, you can be really as snug as a bug as you want. Um, and you can also wear it down and it fits and feels really nice. It doesn't feel like it's pulling on the front of your neck or anything like that. So I'm really singing its praises, but honestly, I was really taken back. And the fact that it goes with so many things in my wardrobe, and I know that it will go with things in Alex's wardrobe too, um, like this, like melted my brain, because they're actually very different yarns. Um, this is some hand spun from Lovely Bee. And the... No, is this Bee? This was B, uh, but this I think was Peyton's, uh, Peyton and Daughter. There's a lot to remember, and it is essentially a Monday morning. So I do apologise. Um, but they don't look that similar, and their luster's definitely very different, and it's spun very different, but they actually go together really well. So... I am quite excited to have like, I'm gonna melt, um, <laughs> but this is like medieval vibes, it's like medieval vibes but modern attitude is the, the thing, but I feel like a woodland ranger, I'm excited, <laughs> I'm very excited, anyway, I'm gonna melt. Um, I love it. I want a black one. I do. Uh, I like that it's not particularly pointy. It's got a little bit of shaping, but it's not like super happy. Oh, oh I've got a, a warm neck, which means it does what it's meant to do. Yeah, so I'm clever construction, very easy to knit. Um, if you can knit and purl and decrease and bind off, you can probably do this. There's two methods for, as I said, finishing the top. I used the invisible. I just felt like that was more me, um, which does require grafting. But again, it's a very simple technique once you get the hang of it and a skill worth learning. So. Amazing, and I'm also going to take this shawl off of my <laughs> legs, though I might put it on my feet. So, I loved it, and Alex loved it. He put it on, and will probably take ownership of one of these or both of these, and we'll share them interchangeably. But I really liked it, and this other yarn had been sat in on this little shelving unit behind me. I've got a bulk, oh hello, you've not come and said hello for a while while I've been here. Come here. Who's that? Them the people that likes you. Yeah, she's like, yeah, but snacks? So I could probably just talk to, <laughs> she's sat on my feet now, um, Audrey for ages, so I won't. But 
yeah, so I've got a little yarn bowl on here. Um, I put in bits when I finish projects that I'm not quite ready to put away yet, or things that I feel like are going to inspire me in there. I've got two, two little, one bowl and one little basket with hooks that I just have on as I enter the room. Um, I find it's nice. It's kind of good, good way of making sure yarn doesn't just sit there and do nothing um, for too long and keeps my creativity going hopefully. And I have had this row work in there for a little while. I actually was wearing my row work ranunculus. It's just here. I'll show you. Why not? <laughs> so this is the ranunculus by Midori Hirose. It is a wonderful pattern that mm, a lot of knitters <laughs> have knitted. It's a top-down yoke jumper with these dreamy textured yoke. It's oversized. It does have a much better size range these days. Um, and I love this thing. I, like I said, this is one of my sort of a, a sweatshirt jumper. It is something that I throw on all the time. It basically goes with everything I own, whether that's dungarees, trousers, skirts, dresses. It goes with everything. Um, the yarn itself is one of my favourite yarns. It's not something that I've had the pleasure of using too much. Um, I think I put a little bit into a a soldatna. I've knitted this and now my next project and I do have the pleasure to be getting to knit with it again and I'm so excited that I actually put on a candle and wound the skein of yarn. Thank you Lydia. Um, my brain. Um, and I kind of just had like a little coffee meeting with it. Uh, and I think I've chosen what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm going to knit a cardigan. Um, again, in my head, I know you don't need to match everything together, but to be able to wear the hood that I'll show you, uh, a jumper, and then to be able to have a cardigan that are all sort of a capsule in themselves is amazing. And I love that sort of layering style. I don't know. It's just, just where my brain is. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to do that. And I just, this has lasted so well. I know that it pills. Um, but for something so lofty, I don't know, it's just lovely. It's a really wonderful fiber. It's natural wool. It's, for me it's next to skin soft and ugh, it's just like smooshy. <clears throat> um, so I had yarn from that uh, left over and for ages I was like maybe I should put it into a shawl. And I did think about knitting uh, Wild Mother using that and I'm very glad that I ended up using a different fibre in the end. But yeah, I thought maybe a hat, and a hat didn't seem like a good enough... Oh, Audrey, Audrey's gone to sit on the window and almost knocked off two plants in the process. <laughs> you troublemaker! Uh, and because I had two skeins, it did seem silly. And I knew that actually this one, although it did use two two balls of worsted, I had this much left of the second, which, because th the this has, what are you doing? I'm very sorry. Let's get a little. Oh, now you stop. Are you just chilling out now, Audrey? Hmm? Are you gonna stay there? <laughs> um. Yes, so this has 150 yards per 100 grams. I kind of knew that it wouldn't use as much as I thought. Um, Rail work has about 225 meters per 100 grams, which is substantially more. 
So I might be able to get a hat out of what I've got left, which is very cool. But here it is. I knitted the hood again in Rowick. I actually made the same, the same version. I did change where I was meant to. So this uh, to a smaller needle size. So this does actually hug in a little bit more. And yeah, I haven't blocked this. I didn't block the other one either. I will give them a little wash just for, you know, I think it's good. It's good practice and I don't always do it, but I will. Um, but yeah, this one's so different. It doesn't have quite as much drape as the, uh, the alpaca version, but equally love it i i do feel like uh i should be in a fairy tale or a fantasy something as soon as i put this on which really makes me happy i think i definitely would like to knit it in black i might not bother because this color is so versatile um it will go with every every coat i've got black's just very good it's very wearable if, if I have something in black, I will almost always go to that version. So maybe I won't for that reason, to get as much wear out of this as I can. And part of me would really like to knit a sort of woodland green one. And then I'd also like to knit a red one. So maybe I should just knit them as gifts and borrow them before I gift them away. I love it. Um, again, you wear it a bit more tucked. I I like that I actually really need to trim my fringe. I'm gonna talk at you today. It's definitely off. Look how wonky this is. I should not be in charge of doing my own hair. But I like the idea that this will actually trap my hair a little bit more than a beanie will in the wind. I. It doesn't make me angry, that's not the right phrase, but you know in the winter and it's really cold and you get my hair pokes me in the eye and it's just, it's bothersome. That's what it is, it's bothersome. You're like, look, just stay tucked away and a beanie doesn't quite cut it and uh, tying your hair up tightly and all those things work, but I feel like this will be it. perfect. We'll just hide it away, the wind can't get at it. Snug. Actually, it's not so hot that I couldn't wear this, but I'm not gonna wear this because I don't want to mess with my body temperature. But I couldn't talk highly, any more highly about these, I don't think. Very cool. And I was really surprised that more people haven't knitted this. Um, yeah, and I think I'd like to try the braided version. I just know that for me personally, and being able to share it with Alex, I think we're both quite... We have our moments of being a little bit bolder for example, but generally we're quite simple on our basic and our clothing choices maybe. Maybe not, maybe that's a, but I feel like we are, I guess given the choice. So I do have, I'll share one whip you've seen before and a new whip. I didn't realise that I was going to talk so much. Um, I have got a little bit further with my Morning Rituals jumper, which is a pattern by Andrea Maori, And the first Andrea Maori pattern that I've knitted. And 
I have got to nearly the point where I need to put in the pockets. So I've had to put, kind of put this bit on hold. I have knitted a little bit on Alex's jumper. I'm knitting him the Ardmore Gansey. I'm not gonna share it this week because I'm literally just knitting stockinette. If I get to a point where I've done a substantial amount or done something different, I'll share it again. But for now, I'm knitting him the Ardmore Gansey and I'm knitting in the round and that is, that's it. Um, but this has been really soothing, really Moorish. While I have had a bit of a rough time, I think quite a lot of people again, it's like we all ebb and flow together, um, have been, and this has just been intuitive enough to not, not feel, uh, it's been intuitive enough to keep going whilst we're, Retaining a little bit of need to use my mental space for this, which has meant it's been a good project for being gentle and letting my mind wander whilst taking my mind away from other things that might otherwise be a bit stressful. Um, so it's been really nice, a comforting, soothing knit. I really love cables. I'm really happy with this yarn actually. Uh, I do still wonder if I might over dye it just a touch, but we'll see. This is Shropshire DK from You and Ply in the Oswald's Tree colorway. I purchased this and I think it's like a 2018 batch maybe. Um, I can't remember. But it's it was it's an older batch which they sell off they sold off for I think it was five pound a skein so it's very affordable. It is a bit toothy. I like it that it's toothy. Um, it's perfect for an outer warm layer, and yeah, uh, I really like it. It is slightly heathered. There's definitely grey fibre in there. Um, yeah. Well, I'm struggling to do <laughs> suddenly gone from being like I want to talk to I might just fall asleep um the pattern itself is bottom-up construction in case that didn't make it clear so you start from the bottom I'll bind off stitches and then add these little pockets back in I've finished one of them mm. oh I've got a bit of a tangle so I finished one and this will be then go back on the needle and then we join and then you'll weave sew that up onto the inside and have pockets which is very exciting for knitwear um i am this far into the second pocket once this is done i'll be able to do a couple more rounds on this and then join the pockets and i will be off i think once you get past the pockets it is just this big center cable that is continued um, all the rest of the cables turn into stockinette so it will be a lot quicker to knit on and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing um, part of me is like oh maybe I should keep some of these up the sides uh, but we'll see what happens with it I'm really really enjoying this still I am not rushing as you can see I'm trying to keep this as one that just is with me um, until the weather's ready so that it feels like it's going to be a while before the weather's ready for this so I'm gonna eke this out as long as I can it's like I'm just sat here rubbing it because it is as much as it is so different to like this this is so much softer I like the tactileness of this I like the way it feels um, I'm also excited to see this one wash and wear because my Braids of Grass jumper is one of my favourites. I haven't worn it yet this year, but it's DK, it's a bit thicker. Um, I say this year, I mean this as we're moving back into the cooler weather. Um, I did wear it at the beginning of the year and will continue to do so. So yeah, that's, there's not much to say on that so like further than what I said last week. I'm really enjoying it. I think it's going to be a wonderful finished piece. And yeah, would would i i quite like the way it's written now but then i haven't had to refer back to it too much 
like I said it just threw me a little bit some of the I don't know why because it really is not much like hugely different anyway clearly on a cable kick because I cast it on a cowl um, I knew my second second sample for my spiritual guardian cow was going to be a gift it was always going to be for my little sister she is the blue girl in the family not literally that would be very cool and i don't think she'd be upset by being that um she wears blue it's her thing and yeah i just really wanted to knit one for myself and when i went up to whistle bear last year i picked up two skeins of yarn to make one for myself uh, this will be a sharesies piece um, and it it could well be a gift but I feel like it's one that I want in my wardrobe quite a lot it's a dark moody grey this the that blue cow I did wear more than I should have for a gift <laughs> but I loved it um, so yeah I'm really enjoying it the cowl itself is fairly straightforward cow it's just a tube but it has quite a lovely cable pattern I designed I'm very proud of it still um, and yeah the pattern calls for fingering weight yarn and lace or a DK I instead have opted for this fingering weight yarn which is Cheviot Marsh from Whistlebear and then this one which is Yvering Bell from Whistlebear, both in the four ply base. Um, I have the colours here, I worry that I'm going to do it wrong. This one, this, you can see it's got a lot of luster to it, and that's because it has mohair and Wensleydale. It is 80% mohair, 20% Wensleydale. It has a halo, so much luster. I, this is one of my favourite yarns on the entire planet. Um, that I've, I've experienced in the colour chainmail and then this one is granite 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 um, it's a dark grey this one's slightly more too like tonal than a lot of the other ones but that makes me very happy actually because it's blending really nicely and it is 100% lamb's wool a blend of Romney Marsh and Romney Cheviot reared in the Cheviot Hills um, I love Whistlebear. Let's get through that. I love Whistlebear. If you've been here, the level of care that goes into these yarns is just amazing. There's not many um, companies that I've had the opportunity to try that are quite as wow when it comes to care as what Alice gives the uh, gives the sheep and the goaties that she has so yeah this is bringing me joy it is it goes almost buttery there's definitely a slight toothiness that you get from this but not again I wear this next to skin and gladly will but the combination of them together it is like a, a creamy feeling it's wonderful um, and I think the stitch definition is magic when you're combining these two um, I can't show this very well I it's on 16 inch a 16 inch cable which is probably a bit small for really showing this off but hopefully next week I will get a little bit further along and put it onto a larger cable so I can really show you what it's looking like but yeah really enjoying it didn't think I would find knitting my own Ooh, there's been a lot of my own stuff on here today I do apologize but I didn't think I would enjoy knitting my own pattern you know two years or whatever yeah wow two years nearly after its release as much as I am um, so yeah uh, that's the knitting I do have one thing that I wanted to share with you and it's not it's not really knitting but it is um, I've been going through lately and just adjusting things in my wardrobe so I rebuttoned the skirt I 
rehemmed some trousers and just a few little things to make things last and improve the fit you know so I pulled out my East Wind jacket which is one of my favorite pieces that I've ever knit um, it is from I have the book here it is the season uh, this is knits about winter it's from uh, Emily Foden who is the dyer behind Viola Viola in the moon Viola yarns it's this is one of my favorite books I know that I say this I've said a lot of favorites but it is this is a bit of a favorites episode um, this was a book created in conjunction collaboration with pom pom I would knit basically everything in this book um, so many beautiful patterns and I think I'm quite inspired and will do a will cast on from this book again um, but the Eastman jacket is from it it's actually the cover image and it is my basically my coat I don't think I needed any other coats last year I wore my leopard print one a fair bit but this is knitted using, uh, I used Jacob DK from West Yorkshire Spinners and a Drops Mohair. And all I've done that I wanted to share is I have upgraded my toggles um, for various reasons. The toggles I used before, or have, I've put away, were much bigger and the way I had attached them was fine, but the way I had made the loops was really not the neatest and I wasn't very happy with it and the front opened a little bit in places and I just wasn't enamoured it just didn't look as finished as I would like it to it does need a little bit of you know uh, maybe a wash and just reblocking just to really make it feel a little bit more pristine but I used the afterthought button loop method rather than the strange crochet method that I did previously and I'm much more happy with the placement they are evenly placed um, it isn't quite perfect at the top there's like a a little bit of a difference but once it's on it doesn't register at all and it might be that I go off and take that one off again and just redo it but it fits together perfectly the air's not going to get in and I think these ones go a lot better the other ones were like a dark chestnutty brown which was nice but I think this really highlights the little contrast colors you get on this it just kind of pulls it together um,
that's all I've done and I just wanted to share that I think now is a good time if you're wanting to do a little bit of mending or oh mohair again getting things ready it's a really nice time to do that I think it's nice to make sure that if we're spending this much time making the things like making them last and if you can adjust something that doesn't take too long or doesn't damage the integrity to make it more wearable and you want to wear it then why not huh um if this ever got holes in it i would darn it i would reinforce it um you know so yeah it's just a kind of a little maybe gentle reminder to you don't have to always make stuff you can adjust what you've got sometimes and make it just a little bit better i think these two are going to be great together as well um my little hood this will make this like basically weatherproof <laughs> uh yeah that is kind of it i didn't film too much when i was out and about on my walks i just kind of i took my headphones out once i got to the park i kept them in while i was walking through the streets and the uh, past the busy roads but I just kind of walked and just let myself be. There's a little bit of footage, um, so I'll put that in at the end, but it was just really nice to be. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything. I've got a few things coming up over the next few weeks that are quite exciting. Like I said, I'm going to be at Perth Yarn Festival. Very excited to be around woolly people. It's been a while. Um, I'll be there on the Saturday. I think on the Sunday we're going to spend time with lovely Monica, who I talk about a lot, who is the amazing tea grower behind Windy Hollow Farm. More mohair. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is like the danger zone today. The danger zone. Uh, mohair zone. Yeah. So I think I will only be there for the one day. I find, I, I feel like one day is enough for those sort of things for me. Unless it was a mahusive thing um, which it is but you know I think I would get a bit overwhelmed and yeah I was really very excited to see Monica and to hopefully see a couple of the little ones um, yeah so I hope that this does find you well I hope that you have a lovely week whatever you get up to I hope to see you next week I should be back um, and yeah. Oh, don't forget to stretch your hands. I've been having to remind myself to do that lately. Uh, if you're knitting or sewing or anything for an extended period of time, don't forget to give your hands a little shake, a little stretch. It's a reminder that I need it, so I'm just seeing if I can pay the favour on. And yeah, hope to see you soon. I love you.
Mr. Alex Simpson, I'm going to...